Today we're checking out this really interesting fork. This is such an interesting fork and it allows me to get super experimental on this channel, which you know I love doing. And Ren's got a couple things going for it. They wanted it to be easy to service. You can service it in your own shop with basic tools. They fully embrace the bike packing lifestyle and long explorations. Their forks are rated down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. They have forks for fat bikes. They have forks for plus bikes. They have longer travel. They have shorter travel. There's tons of adjustments on them. And the damper is a self-contained unit, so you can't service it. But that also means you don't have to worry about oil and all that stuff when you modify your fork. All right, let me show you what comes with this fork and let's get it on the stand so we can take it apart and look at it. This fork is different. It's very different to set up and even ride and tune different from traditional forks. So they have a lot of literature to help explain how it works. I'm gonna try and demystify some of that for you, but you do need a basic understanding of what's going on inside your suspension for it to make sense. Ooh. So right off the bat, you'll notice this is an upside down fork. It's like a motorcycle. The bigger stanchions are up top and the smaller stanchions are on the bottom. They're keyed with these brass keys to keep them vertical. That means less unsprung weight. So the part that actually moves when you hit a bump is smaller by putting the smaller stanchions at the bottom and the bigger ones at the top. You know, this is how most forks look. The beefy parts on the bottom, but by swapping that, they were able to, yeah, get less sprung weight. Also, a lot of people worry that if you scratch these or nick them, they're gonna leak oil out all over the place. That's not the case with the Wren because this is a self-contained cartridge damper unit, kind of like a lot of seat posts. If the damper goes out, you can swap it in and out yourself. So this is the 29 Mountain Fork, and this one has a 46 mil offset, nice short offset like I like. It'll fit up to a 29 by 3.0 tire, and it'll go from 120 to 150 mil travel, all adjustable internally without any special parts you have to buy. There are a lot of things that interest me about this fork, that it's easy to service on your own, that has less moving parts. I like the upside down design, it's different, and I wanted to try something different. I like the huge tire clearance for big tires. I like that you can adjust the travel with no extra parts. You just get some little clips that it comes with to change the travel. And you can also change the axle to crown independent of the travel. If you don't know what axle to crown is, look that up. That's the distance from here to here. And that tells you how high the front end of your bike sits. So usually we do that by travel. A 150 fork will make the front end sit higher than a 130 fork. Well, with this, you can make a 120 fork sit every bit as high as a 150 fork. So you can totally dial in that stack and seat angle and head angle and then adjust the travel. And that's fascinating to me. Usually you're stuck matching axle to crown to the travel. And so you can't run like a 120 mil travel with a high axle to crown on other forks, but you sure can on that. And that's awesome. Now you can't get cheap, light, and better. You can't get all three of those. You have to pick two. This fork is a little bit heavier than some, but for its intended purpose, being rugged, easy to service, easy to use in the backcountry with less bells and whistles and moving parts than some of the really high-end stuff. I think it's a willing trade-off. Another thing that's different is it doesn't use volume tokens. Normally you add volume tokens to your air side part of the chamber and that controls how progressive the fork is or how much it ramps up at the end. Volume spacers usually adjust how the last inch or inch and a half of your travel work. Fewer volume spacers means you use that last inch a lot more. More volume spacers means it's harder to, to get your fork to get into that last little bit. Instead of volume spacers, this has a floating piston inside of it. You add air to the bottom here, and as you add air, it will push that up inside the chamber and act as a volume spacer. So the more pressure you put on the bottom, the, the smaller this chamber is in here, so you're effectively reducing the volume. A little bit confusing if you've never thought about how a fork works before, but just think of it this way. If you wanna add a token, instead of adding a token, add more PSI in this internal spacer, and that's gonna float up and shorten the air spring. So yeah, we've got uh, the lower stanchions here, and once again, there's no oil floating in here. So it's not like if you get a nick on this or if a seal breaks, it's gonna just start oozing oil like a motorcycle fork. It's all sealed. It's just bushings riding in here. 
So yeah, you don't have to worry about that. Even if you did scratch up your stanchions on rocks or crashes, it's still gonna work. You're just gonna file them down, make it smooth so it's not chewing everything up when it goes in here. All right, so I want to adjust both the axle to crown and the travel. So I'm gonna pull this apart. This is not a how-to video, but I'm gonna pull apart the air pressure side of things and change the travel and suspension. I like short travel, I don't like divey forks. I suppose I could keep it long travel and just ramp up that progression to keep it riding in the top, but I wanna really get a feel for how this rides compared to the other 130, 120 mil forks I'm riding. And since I can fit a 29 by 3.0 on here, I can run it on my Binary Maniac as well for some experiments. Excited for that. So I say it's easy to serve. It's, it's easy if you have a 26 mil, uh, which most people don't. So that's one extra part you're gonna need. They did a great job keeping their axle light on threading this little lower seal cap here. And there we have the air spring assembly. That was very easy. Here you can see the little brass keys to keep it from twisting when you ride, but they are meant to shear. So if you totally crash and wad it up, they'll shear off without damaging your fork and you can just buy the little keys to replace those. We're gonna take this all apart so that I can adjust axle to crown and travel. Now Ren has a YouTube video that shows the full disassembly of both sides. So this isn't a how-to, this is just a quick overview. You need some snap ring pliers. They go in these two little holes up in here. Excellent, nothing's torqued on here super hard, which is so nice. You wanna undo all the air pressure so you don't kill yourself. All right. Sweet. All right, this is the stanchion. This is the air spring assembly. I mean, this thing turns into the air spring as well. Awesome. Now the fork comes with some clips and the clips where you place them will change things. If you place them down here on the bottom, which is where I'm gonna place them, it will reduce travel and axle to crown, just like a normal fork. However, up here, you can adjust the travel without changing the axle to crown. So you can get unique and uh, put some different spaces in different configurations to get the axle to crown you want with the travel you want. I'm so excited about that because I wanna be doing a lot of experiments on this. Fortunately, it's easy to take apart and experiment. We have two spacer sizes, 10 mil, 20 mil. This fork runs 10 mil higher axle to crown than most other forks. So I'm going to run this at 120 mil travel. That'll give me a 540 mil axle to crown. That's 10 mil more than the RockShox SID 35 or like a Stepcast 34. So that's great. I'm gonna get that high front end of like a 130 fork with the minimal dive of a 120 fork. I'll experiment around and see what I settle on, but we're gonna start setting it at 120, which is 540 mil axle to crown. So to do that, I'm going to put both spacers onto this shaft here at the very bottom. So I'm gonna put the 20 mil on the bottom and then the 10 mil on top of it. Apparently you're supposed to stick the smaller spacer above the thicker one when you do that. All right, we've got my two spacers on. I haven't lost any grease or anything on this, so this is ready to just go back in. Now I just reassemble it, opposite of how I took it out. I think Ren is bold to be breaking into the suspension market that's dominated by Fox and Rock Shocks. I mean, even Marzocchi was doing pretty well and then Fox bought them, <laughs> kind of interesting. But it's impressive that Ren's able to make a fork that competes with their price as well. I don't expect this to be as nuanced as like, a Pike Ultimate or a Cane Creek Helm or feel quite as refined as like a Fox 36 with a Grip 2 damper. And that wasn't really their goal was ultimate suspension performance. It was ease of use, ease of adjustability, versatility, and you know something that, that doesn't need a whole bunch of service that you can just go out, do yourself, and go take on long epics. Some of the guys in the company live in Alaska and fat bike these things. And with fat bikes, suspension really gets bad at low temperatures, just everything moves slowly. And they have a fat bike specific fork that's designed to work in those lower temperatures, which is pretty cool. It's gonna be weird to have to look down here to check if I'm using all my travel or not. I think if I change one thing, I would make this nut a little taller because only half of the nut is protruding here. I always like it when you can change the travel without having to buy a $50 to $100 air spring. 
you just pop clips on there. That's how the helm is. And I love that there's no oil floating around in here that I have to change when I rebuild this. And rebuilds are as simple as pulling that all out, re-greasing it, putting it all back together like I just did. All right, we're at 50 PSI. We'll start there. So now all my air is in the top of that piston. It's pushed the piston all the way down. So when I add air to the bottom, remember this is like adding volume spacers, is how much volume spacer do I wanna add? The more pressure I put on this side, the more it pushes that up and reduces volume. Really nice quality. The aluminum looks really nice machined. I'm impressed they were able to do this for the price point that they came in at. Now on motorcycles, they deal with rock chips and roost getting thrown at these and they do have oil in there and seals and so they wanna protect their stanchions. Ren understands that we probably wanna protect ours too, so they come with these carbon fiber lower stanchion protectors. I don't think that they're needed for how I intend to use this. However, I want to try it because that's part of the review is understanding how the whole system works. And who knows, I might like it. It can't hurt. If anything, it'll just keep dust out of there. And it's got kind of a cool look there. It kind of looks like a mini motorcycle with those on there. One of these has a cutout for your brake and one doesn't. I don't know, what do you prefer the look of, with or without? So this little clip goes on here and this carbon fiber leg wraps onto there and that holds on at the bottom. I wonder if we're gonna get vibration noise. Probably not. That's pretty stiff. That's probably why they went with carbon because it is so stiff. I'm excited. This thing's gonna look like a mini motorcycle with the upside down forks, the big 29 by 3.0 tires, that slack head angle. This thing is going to turn heads. It looks like nothing else on the planet. My main questions are, do these get in the way of a bike rack mount? Uh, you know, some of the ones that ratchet down on your um, tire back into the arch, I'll just have to back it into here now, which is no problem. These can get scratched up all you want because the stanchions are at the bottom. I've even seen guys run hose clamps on these to put water bottle mounts and stuff. And that actually makes a lot of sense. All right, I threw this on the scale with the axle and it came in at 4.98 pounds. So a little bit heavier than advertised, a little bit heavier than this pike. Yeah, the axle to crown should be similar even though this is a 120 and this is a 130. All right, you'll notice there's no arch on this like a traditional fork where you normally, you know, bolt your cable. And so the cable routing is a little bit different. They come with these little clips. You just clip them on your housing here and then you zip tie it to the fork. And then when I hit a bump, it's gonna make the cable go like that every bump and it'll flex there instead of flexing up here. These are the beefiest stanchions. It's a 36 mil lower stanchion. I can't remember what the top is, 41 or 42 mil. It's, it's beefcake. And then it's got a 160 mil post mount brake. I'm gonna space that out to 200 to fit my big rotor. Oh, this is weird. Because there's no arch, I can put it in one side <laughs> and that leg can droop more than the other. There we go. That quick release feels weird. It gets hard to push that last little bit. I'd rather just have a threaded Allen head axle. I wish this was a 180 rotor, especially for their 150 mil. You gotta figure people running 150 mil of travel probably are running at least a 180 front, front rotor. That'll be a conversation starter for sure. All right, install was totally straightforward. We got it on here. It looks so different and I love different. Tons of clearance with the 29 by 3.0. I'll bet you could fit a 29 by 3.25. That's a pretty cool tire size too. Oh, this is gonna be fun. 